Hi, I'm Paul Hanges. I'm a faculty member at the Organizational Psychology Program at the University of Maryland. And I'm working with a number of libraries, including your own library, to develop the OCDA survey. That's the Organizational Climate and uh, Diversity Assessment Survey. Uh, we are designing the survey to assess various aspects about your, your library and how it's functioning. And by having a range of libraries participating in this survey, we can uh, better provide interpretive data for, for your organization so it can assess how well it's doing on various aspects of uh, the organization. Let me now tell you what the goals are for this this project. We have a number of goals. First of all, the primary goal is develop a tool that assesses the health of your library. That is, it determines whether the policies, practices, and procedures of your library are supporting its mission, and whether the policies, practices, and procedures are facilitating meeting the current as well as the future needs and, and of your customers. Another goal for this project is to develop a large database of norms to help the library interpret their results. Another goal is to develop an active community of libraries that share information and share their experiences as well as various um, changes that they have made to improve the overall effectiveness of the library. And finally, what we're trying to do is to track the changes of the library over time. In other words, each library is going to, be tr is going to get its results and try to see uh, where it can improve and try various uh, interventions. And we will then determine whether the various interventions are effective or not by looking at the survey results over time. And what you expect, of course, is if an intervention is successful, then people will feel better about the organization and the library. In addition to all these um, library-specific results, there's one big research agenda connecting all of this uh, uh, library effort. And that is what we want to do is develop an empirical database to support the theory that is underlying this survey. And there is a theory. Let me tell you a little bit about it right now. Um, in particular, uh, the theory that's driving this project is that, there, that most people in an organization respond to the organization as if it's a living uh, organism. In particular, they actually treat the organization as if it has a personality. And they start reacting to the organization like you would an ordinary individual. You behave in a fashion that's consistent with the overall uh, behavior or personality of the organization. The technical term for the personality of the organization is what's called an organizational climate. And what that is, is employee shared perceptions of the themes or goals or imperatives that describe their workplace. In other words, it is the shared perception of what is important uh, to the organization and what behavior is expected, rewarded, and supported at work. The work that has been published on organizational climate has primarily found support that if you focus on a particular imperative, people will agree about where the organization is, how it's functioning on that imperative. For example, for hospitals, one major imperative is um, a climate for safety, the extent to which everyone works in ways such that their behavior promotes the safety of themselves as well as the patients. And what the research has shown is that hospitals that have a higher climate for safety, that is hospitals in which people agree that safety is a behavior that is rewarded, supported, and expected, those hospitals actually have significantly lower patient deaths. So you have a significant outcome as a result of what behavior people agree is rewarded, supported, expected. There's also research that organizations that have a climate for productivity outperform organizations that don't have such a climate, that organizations like restaurants that have a climate for customer service outperform and have better customer service than organizations, restaurants that don't. So there's clearly something behind 
the particular climate or personality that organizations have, that it's somehow the employees get together and start working in ways that, so that their behavior is consistent with the overall climate of the organization and customers can uh, spot this and figure it out and they're actually more satisfied if the organization is meeting their needs. What, what explains how climate comes about is a model that's called the Attraction Selection Attrition Model which was developed by Ben Schneider back in 1987. He was uh, also an organizational faculty member in my program at the University of Maryland. In particular, this model says the following, that you have a general population of individuals, and they, they differ on all sorts of domains, personality, values, skills, and abilities. When an organization has um, a position open, and advertises for people to apply for certain jobs, you don't have a random sampling of people from the population applying for the jobs, but rather you tend to get a specialized subset. In other words, a non-random sampling of the population is attracted to the organization and apply for that job. These people are probably more similar in terms of their skills and abilities, maybe even in terms of their values or personality or interests to each other than the grand population. These people apply to the organization non-randomly because of the job that is, being, uh, that is uh, available as well as in terms of the personality of the organization. Some people want to work for Apple Computer and they're different than those people that want to work for IBM, for example. The next stage of the process is that the organization selects individuals from all the applicants. Once again, this process further increases the similarity among those employees that are selected. They're more similar in terms of their skills, their values, their interests, and personality. The final stage of the process is this attrition stage for the ASA model. And that's where, after time, people start to realize that either they made a mistake initially and they leave the organization to go work for another organization or their interests change over time and then they decide that they no longer have the same interests or at least the organization is not fulfilling their interests and so they decide to leave. The consequence of this attrition process is that the people who are left behind are once again more similar to each other than those who are leaving. And so what we have with the attraction selection attrition process is that the current employees are more similar in terms of their abilities, their values, their personalities, and uh, belief systems than those people outside the organization. So it's the similarity in all these psychological factors which cause the organization to take on certain policies, practices, and procedures because it's these employees who actually start deciding what policies to implement, what procedures to do. And as a result of the particular policies and procedures and practices organizations choose to use, the organization develops a certain personality and you have organizational climate. And so that's how, that's our belief about how organizational climate comes about. Now there's a positive side to this attraction selection attrition cycle that is, it actually builds strong climate. And so people know what to do, they know, they know what's expected of them, and they go do their job. They don't need to be supervised uh, in detail. They don't need to be micromanaged. Um, the downside is, is that we're, if we're not careful, the degree to which the uh, workforce becomes so similar to each other becomes too strong, and they lose their connection with the environment. We're, we're living in a dynamic environment, and organizations that lose touch, such as the automobile industry in the United States, realize that as the demands of the environment change, they can no longer meet the demands of the environment. And so what you have to do, what any organization has to do in order to remain healthy, is to manage this process. The attraction selection attrition process is a naturally occurring process. The equalization of employees is a natural process. What the organization has to do is find a way to prevent the process from occurring too strictly. So in other words, it needs external force too. 
And that's where some of the factors that we're looking at in the survey come into play. Climate for diversity, the extent to which the organization has to allow the attraction, uh, attraction selection, attrition cycle to operate, but not too finely, in order to make sure that we still have a workable level of diversity in values and interests and skills so that the organization can, be, can anticipate what are the demands of the uh, environment. You know, where is the environment going? So if you have a diverse group of employees, you can anticipate that. You also, if you have a diverse group of employees, you're more likely to be able to manage change. Not only anticipate where the environment's going, but having the skills locally so that you can start adapting and changing the organization. It clearly requires an organization that can maintain a diverse workforce. How do we do this? Well, first of all, you need a climate that respects diversity. You also need a climate that respects fairness and treats its employees fairly. You also need a climate that has, you also need an organization that has a climate for continual learning because you're constantly picking up information about where the environment is going. Uh, there might be new technology, and I know in the libraries here, you're constantly bombarded with technology changes. A library has to be responsive in order to keep up with the shifting demands and being able to learn and appreciate and quickly adapt to the new technology. These are the questions that our survey, the OCDA survey, is going to be assessing. Let me tell you some other measures. I've already mentioned climate for diversity is going to be measured, climate for fairness is going to be measured, climate for innovation, climate for continual learning. We have measures of those. But we're also going to be looking at climate for teamwork, the extent to which the organization uh, comes together because what we found is the healthier organizations, the ones that are able to be more responsive to environmental changes, are those organizations where you're not drawing on a single person's body of knowledge, but you're sharing that knowledge across a number of people to meet the changing demands. We're also going to be looking at worker attitudes, uh, such as job satisfaction and commitment, because these are important precursors to customer service opinions. Now, this is phase two of the project, and we have 10 libraries participating in this phase of the project. Let me tell you a little bit about what we discovered about the survey in phase one. This project was originally developed at the University of Maryland, and we had substantial success in terms of improving the quality of how the employees felt about the library over a four-year period. In phase one, we wanted to see whether the survey that was developed at the University of Maryland can generalize to other libraries, and we found that it, it could. We actually had five libraries involved in that phase, and indeed, the survey uh, worked. We had reliable scales. We also were able to test some aspects of the theory that I just described to you. With the five libraries, they were all involved in LibQual, the extent to which customers are rating the library in terms of their overall satisfaction. In particular, they looked at things such as uh, information control, the extent to which uh, users can find information in the library in the format of their own choosing. Or LibQual also measured stuff like affective service, user interactions with and the general help, helpfulness of the staff. What we found in that is consistent with our model we found that climate for diversity, uh, how employees describe their library in terms of its climate for diversity, is significantly related to informational control. And of course that makes sense, because the more that the library uh, is seen as valuing diversity in their employees, the greater the extent to which the employees can anticipate the environment and actually allow, develop procedures so that users can collect their data, their needed information, in lots of different ways. And indeed, we found that what customers say about information control is significantly related to what employees say about their libraries in terms of climate for diversity. We also found that climate for teamwork was significantly related to um, uh, the live wall. 
So we have bits and pieces in terms of the theory seems to be working. Aspects of what employees are saying is indeed related to aspects of what customers are saying. There is support for this overall model. We want to further that, in, and that's what phase two is designed to do. We're going to verify that uh, the scales are working. We're going to have a sufficient sample size to do a complete test of the theory, as well as the fact that uh, we're developing a database so that your library, as a function of participating in this research project, will be able to have a, a good base with which to interpret their information and see how well uh, they're doing. In addition, we are developing an active resource, an active community of libraries, so that they can exchange information about how well they're doing or points in which they're struggling, and then they can start exchanging ideas about useful inf interventions. And it creates a true community of libraries that are seeking to improve the overall health of the organization as well as conditions of the employees in the library. Now, let me tell you a little bit about survey administration. It's going to be an online administration. You're going to be able to take the survey at your desk. We estimate that the uh, entire survey should take approximately 60 minutes. Because, and the reason why it's taking 60 minutes is that you're not only answering um, quantitative questions in terms of here's a response, here's a, here's a comment, indicate on a five-point scale what you think. We have lots of rooms for your qualitative comments, for you to write information uh, about these scales, about climate for fairness in your library. Um, and so really the time to, to complete the survey varies. It depends on whether you write a lot in the qualitative comments or not. Now we also decided on online administration for a number of reasons. Since we're asking everybody in your library about their perceptions about the internal workings of the library, it was critical that we maintain the confidentiality of all our data. So we decided that an online administration is one way that we can handle this. First of all, you take the survey at your desk at a time that you feel that you won't be interrupted and that it's fairly private, and that information is not stored on your library's computers. It goes to an off-site computer and it's stored there. When the survey is finished at your library, the data then comes to me and my group in the psychology department to be analyzed. So nobody connected with a library is actually seeing the raw data then we're going to send reports to your organization, but we never send reports at an individual level of specificity. All the reports uh, are provided to the library at an average level, an aggregate level, so the library can see how well it's done overall, or maybe how various divisions are doing. But we never report the data so that any one individual's response can be identified. That's true also for the qualitative comments as well. What we are doing with the qualitative comments is we don't just provide the raw data back to your library. We go through and we provide themes. So my group content code the data response. So that's how we maintain the confidentiality. Indeed, this survey, confidentiality is key. Responses must be completely anonymous and confidential will make sure that none of the individual responses can be linked to any person. They will not be seen by your supervisor or colleagues. And we want to make sure that you're giving us your honest opinions. And the way that we do that is we make sure that your responses uh, are anonymous and confidential and therefore cannot affect your employment status in any way, other than the fact that the organization takes actions and you have a better organization. So that's basically uh, what I have to say about the OCDA survey. I want to thank you very much uh, for taking the time and listening to the webcast. And uh, spend some time visiting the, our webpage. There's some information that we have. We have example reports when Marilyn was involved in the project. Actually, Marilyn still is, but it's the early reports on the project. So you can get a feel for the kinds of information we provide your library as well as we have a bibliography and we're starting to actually start publishing some of these pieces and so some have appeared in the library journals portal for example and as well as in my journal